Hello, in this video, we're going to talk about anemia. Anemia can be rigorously defined as a reduced absolute number of circulating red blood cells. In practice, a low hemoglobin concentration or a low hematocrit is most widely accepted definition for anemia. So anemia can be defined as hemoglobin level of less than 120 grams per liter in females and less than 140 grams per liter in males. Red blood cells are the cells that carry oxygen around our body. They contain hemoglobin molecules, millions of them, which help bind oxygen. Red blood cells also contain many types of enzymes, including lactate dehydrogenase. Red blood cells are important in carrying oxygen and carbon dioxide, as well as maintaining pH of the blood. Red blood cells arise from myeloid progenitor cells in the bone marrow. Erythropoiesis is the process of erythrocyte production. Myeloid progenitor cells become reticulocytes first, and this path is stimulated by hormones, including erythropoietin. Erythropoietin is a true endocrine hormone produced in the kidney by cells that sense uh, adequacy of tissue oxygenation relative to the individual's metabolic activity. Other hormones that facilitate uh, in red blood cell uh, production are the thyroid hormones and androgen. Reticulocytes are the premature erythrocytes, so the premature red blood cells, a cell still capable of limited amount of hemoglobin and protein synthesis. The reticulocytes enter the bloodstream three days later and matures to become uh, the red blood cell as we know it. The mature red blood cell circulates for around 120 days, after which time it is removed from the circulation by the reticuloendothelial system. The reticuloendothelial system includes the spleen and the liver, where macrophages and monocytes will eat up and clear up these old red blood cells, but also clear up the abnormal red blood cells. When performing a full blood count or a complete blood count, looking at hemoglobin is the first step to diagnosing anemia. But how does one categorize anemia? Well, one way is to look at the full blood count first and look at the mean corpuscular volume. The mean corpuscular volume, uh, abbreviated MCV, is the average size of the person's red blood cell. Therefore, one way to categorize anemia is using the mean corpuscular volume. You can have microcytic anemia less than 80 femtoliters, normocytic anemia between 80 to 100 femtoliters, and then macrocytic anemia, which is greater than 100 uh, femtoliters. And these are essentially the sizes of the red blood cell. Causes of microcytic anemia include iron deficiency, chronic inflammatory disease, and thalassemia. Investigations that should be performed in this context include iron studies and then calculating the Mensa index, which is helpful in differentiating iron deficiency anemia from beta thalassemia. When someone with anemia has a normal MCV, a reticulocyte count should be performed. Remember, the reticulocytes are the premature red blood cells that are still in the bone marrow. The reticulocyte count can be either high or it can be low. If it's a high reticulocyte count, this can mean a hemolytic anemia or blood loss because the body is trying to compensate and produce more reticulocytes to replenish the red blood cells that are lost. If the reticulocyte counts are low, this could signify a bone marrow disorder such as aplastic anemia because the bone marrow is unable to produce adequate amounts of red blood cell. When the hemoglobin is low and the MCV is high, this signifies macrocytic anemia. A blood film should be performed to differentiate between megaloblastic or non-megaloblastic macrocytic anemia. Megaloblastic anemia is basically where on the blood film you can see large immature red blood cells called megaloblasts. Also, you can potentially see hypersegmented neutrophils. These findings on the blood film signify someone that has vitamin B12 deficiency, folate deficiency, or drug toxicity side effect from methotrexate, for example. 
If the blood film only shows large, mature red blood cells, this is non-megaloblastic and can signify alcohol abuse, hypothyroidism, and pregnancy as potential causes of the anemia. Anemia can be categorized based on the size using the mean corpuscular volume, as we have talked about. Another way to categorize anemia is by the mechanism of anemia. We can easily categorize anemia in this way by looking at the red blood cell life cycle. A cause of anemia can be from a decreased production, so reduced erythropoiesis. Examples include bone marrow disorders such as aplastic anemia, because remember red blood cells are formed from the bone marrow. Chronic kidney disease can also cause anemia because when you have chronic kidney disease or kidney failure, you're reducing erythropoietin production and therefore reducing erythropoiesis. Hypothyroidism, because remember thyroid hormones play a role in stimulating erythropoiesis. Vitamin B12 deficiency and iron deficiency can also lead to anemia because these are the substances needed in order to produce good functioning red blood cells. Chronic inflammatory disease, which basically causes a form of iron deficiency, but also is thought to reduce the lifespan of the red blood cell. Another mechanism which leads to anemia is through blood loss, and this can be gastrointestinal blood loss, someone going through heavy periods, trauma, accidents, motor vehicle accidents, for example, leading to blood loss. Another mechanism leading to anemia is through the increase in red blood cell destruction. Increased destruction of red blood cells really means hemolysis, and this can be further divided into intravascular hemolysis, which means destruction of red blood cells in the vasculature, and extravascular hemolysis, which means destruction of red blood cells outside the vasculature, typically in the reticular endothelial system we talked about. Examples of intravascular hemolysis include disseminated intravascular coagulopathy, thrombocytopenic, thrombotic thrombocytopenic purpura, hemolytic uremic syndrome, and mechanical heart valve where the red blood cells die through from sheer stress of a mechanical valve in the heart. Extravascular hemolysis occurs when there is increased destruction of red blood cells, typically through the reticular endothelial system. Examples include hypersplenism, inherited hemolytic anemia disorders such as sickle cell anemia and hereditary spherocytosis, acquired hemolytic anemia such as in malaria, when a red blood cell gets destroyed, they release a number of things, which are important things to measure to see whether someone has hemolytic anemia. Red blood cell destruction causes the release of lactate dehydrogenase. Red blood cells is made up of a lot of hemoglobin, millions of hemoglobin molecules. When hemoglobin is broken down, you get globin, which is a protein, unconjugated bilirubin, and iron. Usually the body is able to clear all these byproducts of red blood cell destruction up. However, in hemolysis, you have overwhelming red blood cell destruction. And as a result, you can also have free hemoglobin in circulation. Luckily, there are molecules which float around our body which help clear up these free hemoglobin molecules. These are called haptoglobins. Therefore, blood tests to order in someone with suspected hemolytic anemia include measuring their lactate dehydrogenase, which should be elevated, the reticulocyte count, which should be elevated because the body is trying to compensate by producing more red blood cells. There should be an increase in bilirubin, which also means the person can present with jaundice. And finally, low haptoglobin levels because they are bound to free hemoglobin and are being cleared up by the body. Red blood cells, as mentioned, are very important in carrying oxygen to the body, providing uh, energy for the cells. And therefore, with low amounts of red blood cells, you can have signs of basically fatigue and low energy. A person with anemia can therefore present with pala, conjunctiva pala, fatigue, scleral ictrus if you are thinking hemolysis, bony tenderness if you are thinking bone marrow disorders, lymphadenopathy if you are thinking infection or malignancy, dyspnea, and hepatosplenomegaly if you are thinking hemolysis or bone marrow disease. I hope you enjoyed this video on the overview of anemia. To learn more about other hematological disorders, please check out 
the playlist.